Hello, my name is Christian Conrad. I'm at the University of Bristol and I'm presenting a joint work with Sanjeev Khanna, who is at the University of Pennsylvania. So this work is about optimal bounds for dominating set in graph streams. So this work addresses the data streaming setting. In a data streaming setting, we assume that we have only sequential access to the input. That is, the input items arrive in some arbitrary order at the algorithm, the algorithm process and processes them as they come in. Um, we only allow the algorithm to make a single pass over the data, so this is a restriction we have in this work. Of course, multiple passes are also conceivable in this model. Now, the key feature of the data streaming setting is that um, we have only sublinear space in the size of the input, um, because otherwise, if we had linear space, of course, we could just store the entire input as we're processing the stream. So space is sort of, uh, small space is the key feature of this model. In our settings, since we're addressing dominating sets, so that's a graph problem, um, we look at graph streams. We distinguish here between two models, so there's the insertion-only model and the insertion-deletion model. In the insertion-only model, we assume that the edges of the input graph arrive in arbitrary order. In the insertion-deletion model, um, we might have also deletions, edge deletions, that is, edges might be inserted but then later on deleted again. They could also be then reinserted and deleted again. So for example in these uh, two pictures here, in the top picture, this, describes, this graph is described by these four edges that arrive in some arbitrary order in the insertion only setting. In this picture here, this in fact um, corresponds to the uh, input stream here on the left. This describes exactly the same graph um, as up here. The difference is that um, we have edges E5 and E6. So for example E5 is inserted, then deleted, inserted, uh, and deleted again. So overall, um, at the end, E5 does not survive. And um, for this reason, uh, yeah, these two um, input streams describe the same graph. Now, um, the goal is in both settings to have an algorithm that uses space little o of n square, which is a priori non-trivial for very dense graphs. So we have um, at most n square edges, so little o of n square is a priori already non-trivial. Now, um, what is a dominating set? So here's some input graph G. Um, and then a dominating set is a subset of vertices such that every, um, every other vertex is adjacent to one of the vertices in the dominating set, or the way it's written here, the inclusive neighborhood of the dominating set um, is um, the entire vertex set. Then um, we will also uh, use the notion of a cover certificate, so our lower bounds will require um, that algorithms output a cover certificate. So a cover certificate um, is an assignment or is essentially a mapping from the vertex set to the dominating set, indicating um, which vertex is dominated by which uh, vertex from the dominating set. So example 2, vertex 2 here is dominated by vertex 1. 1 is of course dominated by 1 itself. 3 is dominated by 4, 4 is dominated by 4 itself, 5 is dominated, for example, by 6, but also by, by 4, and 6 is dominated by 6. So that's what we mean by a cover certificate. Um, then uh, we're interested in a minimum dominating set, so that's the best dominating set that we could have. That's a dominating set of smallest size. Here, this one would be of size 2. Then. Um, we are interested in approximations, um, so we say that a dominating set is an alpha approximation if its size is smaller th um, equal to than alpha times the size of a minimum dominating set. So approximation factors are larger equal to one here. Good. Now dominating set is the problem that we address in the data streaming setting in this work, and this uh, problem dominating set is um, related to the set cover problem and set cover has been extensively studied in the streaming setting. So let's uh, start by pointing out this connection between dominating set and set cover. So what is set cover about? So in set cover we have a input uh, universe, U, which we say is of size n, and we have a family of uh, sets. So um, we have overall m sets. All of these sets are subsets of our universe U. The output then um, should be the smallest possible subset of this family um, S that covers the entire universe. So the union of these sets in S prime should be the entire universe U. Then we can also, of course, talk about approximation similar to dominating set. So um, here's the connection between set cover and dominating set. So here, suppose we have a dominating set instance. So we have an input graph G um, with vertex set V and edges E. 
then um, we want to cover all of V in dominating set. So we could, to turn this dominating set instance into a set cover instance, we can set the universe in the set cover instance to be equal to V. And um, now the set family in a set cover instance then would be uh, the inclusive neighborhoods of all the vertices. So for example, here we have vertex number four, the inclusive neighborhood would be three, four, and five. So um, this would be one of the sets because of course, if we add four to the dominating set, then um, this means that vertex three and five is covered corresponding to a set consisting of the elements three, four, and five. Good. So these problems in general, are we can reduce them to each other in linear time. Now in the streaming setting, these two problems are however quite different and uh, this will become clear in a minute. So let's first look at uh, streaming algorithms for, the, for set cover. So um, for set cover, the typical model considered in the literature is the set arrival model. So here's an example. So suppose these are our sets in our input. Uh, we have six sets and um, they are described here in this table. Then uh, the arrival order, the input arrival order in the stream is um, the set arrival order is the following. So we would see the sets arriving in arbitrary order. That is, um, we see, for example, here um, set two arriving, which means we get, say, for example, the identifier of set two, so two, and the elements that are contained in set two. Then we see set six arriving uh, with the elements that are contained in it. So in other words, the entire sets arrive one by one in the set arrival model. Now, in this specific model, um, we know, in fact, optimal bounds for one-pass algorithms. So um, the known results in the literature are as follows. So first of all, if we are interested in a root n approximation, then we can get for set cover an algorithm with space or the tilde of n. So this um, observe that we have m sets in the set cover instance. So the space only depends on n, the size of the universe here, and potentially a log m factor um, uh, in here. So um, this holds for a, a root n approximation. So we might ask what happens if we want something better than a root n approximation. So if alpha is in little o of root n, then in fact the space that is needed is n times m divided by alpha. So here the space depends on m, and in fact n times m is roughly the size of the entire set cover instance. Recall that we have m sets and a universe of size n, so that we can describe all these sets with n times m space. So um, yeah, so this is n times n di uh, divided by alpha. Now, this is interesting because uh, it's a somewhat strange behavior at this approximation factor of root n. We have a phase transition here. So the space is really very large, n times m over alpha for alpha being little o of root n. And then suddenly at root n, there's a jump um, down to space n. So this is uh, quite quite interesting about the set cover problem in the one pass setting. Good. Okay, so let's move on to a dominating set. So for dominating set, um, it is much more natural to consider a edge arrival model similar to in, in the insertion only uh, model, graph stream model that we've uh, discussed previously. So um, here, suppose we have, in fact, our input graph as before, then um, this set system uh, that I've uh, shown on the previous slide, I've copied it here. And this set system, in fact, corresponds to uh, exactly this uh, input graph here. So set four, for example, is, are these elements three, four, and five. Now, um, for dominating set, we don't assume that all these sets or inclusive neighborhoods arrive one by one. We assume that the edges of the graph arrive one by one. So for example, this would be um, a potential input sequence that we see, just the sequence of edges, first four, five arrives, then one, two, etc. Now, um, we can um, tr turn a dominating set instance where the edges arrive still into a set cover instance, but um, we see that then sort of the information for five, the edge for five would correspond to now sort of um, to uh, the information about two sets, that is. In the set number four, we know that uh, the item five is included. So the set number four, corresponding to this vertex, we know that the item five is included, but we also know that in the set number five, the item four should be included. So um, if we replicate essentially this information for five and turn it into sort of two bits of information, then we would end up with what we could call the um, edge arrival set cover problem. That is, um, 
in, we have a set cover instance here, but now not entire sets arrive, but only uh, sort of um, every bit is one information that shows that a specific item is contained in a specific set. Um, so we can translate sort of a dominating set into an edge arrival set cover instance. Um, and of course, this edge arrival set cover instance has a specific structure in that um, uh, information is replicated in that sense, but these two settings are almost equivalent. So, in fact, streaming dominating set, we can regard it as um, edge arrival set cover with um, m equals n, so n sets overall. It's essentially equivalent up to this uh, duplication of information here. Okay, now. Um, this problem dominating set or edge arrival set cover is different to set cover, but nevertheless, um, uh, it is of course also very similar at the same time. In fact, if we look at the results for set cover um, again, then we can um, take this specific result here that says um, for uh, the approximation factor is little o of n, um, then we can uh, leverage and take this result and apply it for dominating set as well or for um, uh, edge arrival set cover. Um, even in, in the insertion deletion setting, this result would hold. So for alpha being in little o of n uh, root n, this immediately translates to the dominating set problem. So for dominating set, we immediately get the result that space uh, um, o til uh, theta tilde of n square over alpha is necessary and sufficient for every alpha being in little o of n uh, root n. So uh, that's pretty good. So we've already uh, established um, uh, or sorted out the situation for alpha being uh, in little o of root n. But then still we have the following open questions. So the first question is, set cover did um, admit this phase transition. So for alpha equal um, theta of root n, the space suddenly collapses down to n. So the question is whether the same holds uh, true for dominating set as well. And if it does, is it also at the same approximation factor, roughly uh, root n? Because, um, well, dominating set in the end is a harder version of set cover here. Then um, the other question is, um, for alpha being at least root n, um, what about the insertion deletion setting? What if we allow deletions? Um, does the problem behave differently? Do we have a phase transitions, transition as well? So in this work, we address these two questions. And this brings us to um, the results that we've got. So the first result is the following. We look at insertion-only streams and um, we obtain the following result. So we show that there is a one-pass streaming algorithm for dominating set um, with approximation factor O tilde of root n and space O tilde of n. So in other words, um, this uh, dominating set behaves similar to set cover and uh, we have also a phase transition for dominating set at root, roughly root n. We have uh, root n and there's some log or polylog factor um, as well. Then um, we also see that this dominating set algorithm that we designed um, works as well for arbitrary edge arrival set cover instances. So it's um, more general than um, it, it does not only work for dominating set with m equals n, but for um, arbitrary uh, number of sets. Now, one might ask, um, so here we have an algorithm with space O tilde of n. We might ask what happens if we have space uh, smaller than uh, you know, O of n. We have little O of n space. And we prove that essentially if we have uh, less space than um, n, then uh, we cannot achieve a uh, little o of n approximation. So we show um, if we have uh, if we want a little o of n approximation, then we need space omega of n over log n. So there's not much left below the space of n for this problem. Good. Then uh, we address the insertion deletion setting. So in the insertion deletion setting, we uh, give a lower bound. And we prove that every one pass alpha approximation streaming algorithm for dominating set in insertion deletion streams requires space um, omega tilde of n square over alpha. So observe that this holds for the entire range of alpha values. So there is no phase transition at alpha uh, equals to root n. So um, the situation is uh, much simpler in the setting. 
Now, um, there is this algorithm I've previously mentioned uh, by Asadi, Kana, and Lee. So this is the algorithm that matches this n square over alpha bound, or in the set cover setting, this n times m over alpha bound. And um, in fact, this algorithm is so general that it uh, works for, as previously mentioned, it works for insertion deletions uh, setting as well and the edge arrival setting as well. So this lower bound um, matches uh, this algorithm. So in the insertion deletion setting, the, um, the situation is then entirely described by um, this lower bound and this algorithm. Okay. So um, yeah, I want to present now uh, these two results in um, a bit more detail. So let's first look at the algorithm for the insertion only setting. Now, um, what we really work with here in the paper is um, the bipartite incidence graph representation of the input graph that is as follows. So if the, we have the input graph on the left, then we can construct the following bipartite version of it. We just put all the vertices, um, uh, a copy of the vertices as our A vertices, another copy of the vertices as B vertices. And then um, uh, the vertex um, number four, for example, is connected to vertex three and five and of implicitly to four as well. So um, we introduce an edge that connects four on the left side to three, four and five. So um, we capture essentially the neighborhood relationship in this bipartite graph. Then uh, we see that a dominating set in that sense, um, here it's a dominating set, we have one, four and six included. If we highlight these vertices on the left side, one, four and six, then we see that their neighborhood of one, four and six covers all the B vertices here. So in this representation, um, the goal is we want to cover B using the A vertices. And um, we will assume that the input to our um, algorithm is in fact uh, an edge arrival stream of the edges in this bipartite incidence graph. Now uh, this covers, so this is slightly more general than um, having the edges arriving in the original graph, um, so it captures even arbitrary edge arrival set cover instances. We do assume uh, in this presentation though that m equals n, so um, this arises from a dominating set instance. Okay, so let's look first at a slightly um, simpler setting. Um, so again, the input is the bipartite incidence graph, and we assume that now entire neighborhoods of the A vertices arrive in the stream. So this uh, corresponds to the set arrival setting for set cover, essentially. So um, we will first look at how we can obtain a root n approximation here. So do the, we can do the following. So for each incoming neighborhood, so the neighborhoods of the A vertices arrive in arbitrary order. Now, if this neighborhood um, contains at least root and yet uncovered elements on the B side, then we add this uh, vertex AI to the dominating set. So it's a greedy algorithm. If we cover enough, if we cover at least root and vertices, then let's put this vertex into the dominating set. Now, as a post-processing step, because uh, the first uh, step might not cover all the uh, B vertices, vertices, so for every yet uncovered B vertex, we add an arbitrary A vertex that covers this B vertex into the dominating set. Good. Now, why does this give a root n approximation? Um, first of all, we see that in step one, while we're processing the stream, we might add at most root n vertices um, to our solution because uh, we only add a vertex if it covers yet un uh, root n yet uncovered elements. This can happen at most root n times. So that's good. Now, um, what we then see in the post-processing stage, um, we know now that every vertex, every A vertex that's not in the dominating set yet, um, covers less than root n of the uncovered, yet uncovered vertices in the post-processing step. This has to be the case because otherwise this vertex would have been added in the first step. So there we have a sort of a trade-off here. If we now, um, for every B, yet uncovered B vertex, we um, add a separate set, then um, this, is, this is fine because um, in an optimal solution, we know that these vertices, um, uh, any, any other vertex might cover only at most root n of these vertices. So we trade off a root n with a one here. So that's fine. So we get a, a root n approximation for this algorithm. Good. Now, uh, let's, uh, based on this algorithm, let's move to the edge arrival setting or the, the, yeah, we, uh, the setting where we don't have entire neighborhoods arriving in the stream. 
And then, of course, the main challenge here is that um, we simply cannot assume that we see these entire neighborhoods at any one moment. The neighborhoods essentially are, they might arrive at arbitrary positions in the data stream, so we don't have all this information in one go. Now, our algorithm is also a root n approximation algorithm, but we will first start with the n to the two third approximation algorithm that is uh, much simpler, and then I will um, talk about modifications of this algorithm that then give us a root n approximation. So we have a pre-processing step, and in this pre-processing step, we uh, we first take a uniform random sample of the a vertices, um, and uh, um, every a vertex is included in the sample with probability one over n to the one third. So we have a uniform sample of size roughly n to the two third. Good. Now, um, for every a vertex, we maintain a quantity that we call the uncovered degree, and initially this is zero. Then, uh, as we go along and we process the stream, um, so AB is the current edge that we see, first of all, if the B vertex is already covered in D in the dominating set, then we don't do anything at all. So assume that the B vertex is not yet covered in the dominating set. Then what we do is um, we increase the uncovered degree of uh, the, the respective A vertex that's incident to that on that edge. Good. Now, only once the uncovered degree of a vertex, of an A vertex, reaches n to the two third, then we add this vertex to the dominating set. Okay, so this is all we do while processing the stream. We, uh, if the B vertex is not yet covered, then we increase the uncovered degree, and if the uncovered degree of a vertex uh, reaches n to the two third, then we include it in the dominating set. And then, similar to before in the other algorithm, um, if at the end of the stream there is an yet uncovered B vertex, then uh, we add an arbitrary A vertex that covers this B vertex. Um, so, uh, yeah, an arbitrary one. Good. Now, what's the analysis of this algorithm? So, first of all, um, we see that every B vertex that has a degree that is at least n to the one third log n um, will be covered by one of the vertices added in the, in the uniform sample in the first step. Simply, if we have a degree of n to the one third log n and we sample n to the two third random vertices in the graph, then uh, necessarily one of them, or with high probability, will be in the neighborhood of B. So what this means is, as while we're processing the stream, um, after having seen n to the one third log n incident edges to a B vertex, uh, we know, or with high probability, this vertex will be covered. And in other words, only these first n to the one third log n edges um, can contribute to increasing the uncovered degrees of the a vertices. Um, recall in the algorithm, once a p vertex is covered, um, uh, nothing happens anymore. The uncovered degrees are not degrees are not increased. So that means if we take the sum of the uncovered degrees while we're processing the stream, then we see that well we have n b vertices and uh, each b vertex contributes with the n to the one third log n. So we know that the sum of uncovered degrees is at most n to the four third log n. So what this means is um, only n to the two third log n a vertices now can reach an uncovered degree of n to the two third and are thus added to the dominating set. So this happens in this line. So. Um, yeah, so the number of uh, vertices in introduced while processing the stream into the dominating set cannot be too much. It's only n to the two-third log n. So overall, steps one and two, pre-processing and while what we're doing while we're processing the stream, um, adds at most n to the two-third log n vertices to the dominating set. So that's not too many, even if the optimal solution um, was one or two, a very small um, dominating set, we would still be within this n to the two third approximation regime. Now, um, if we look at the post processing step, um, then we see the following. So, first of all, every vertex that's not included in the dominating set um, can cover at most n to the two third vertices of those that are left at the end. And the reason for that, again, is if this number was bigger, then it would have been added here because then the uncovered degree would be at least n to the two third and they would be included in the dominating set. We also see that each vertex um, that is added to the dominating set in this uh, step two, so it misses at most n to the two-thirds elements elements before being added to the dominating set. 
Um, uh, this is simply because um, the first n to, n to the two third times we just increase the uncovered degree and only then it is added. But that's okay to miss n to the two third elements before being added because even if we cover all these elements individually with separate sets, then we only add n to the two third um, uh, sets to the solution while sort of um, we add in the optimal solution one vertex. So there's again this trade of one versus n to the two third, and this um, ultimately gives an n to the two third log n approximation, this algorithm. Good. Now, um, here I've copied this algorithm again, and I will now step by step modify this algorithm um, and uh, display our n to the one third, uh, sorry, n to the one half um, log n approximation algorithm. So the first problem that we see is that in step one we took this uniform random sample where we add roughly uh, n to the two third vertices to d, but that's too much because um, if the optimal solution was of size one or a constant size, then we can have only root n elements in, the, in our solution to have a root n approximation factor. Similar in this step, uh, here in step two, when we add um, an a vertex to the solution, um, that we only do that when the uncovered degree is n to the two third. So we might uh, miss these n to the two third uh, b vertices, which is also too much. So we can miss at, at most root n of these. So what we can do is the following. Um, let's just replace these numbers and take a, a smaller sample and uh, um, here we just use the number n to the one half in order not to miss too much. Then this of course has implications to the, for the algorithm and the implication is that now the sum of uncovered degrees um, suddenly becomes um, uh, quite a bit bigger, so the sum of uncovered degrees would suddenly be n root n log n. And um, from this we deduce that in fact uh, all n a vertices may now reach this uncovered degree of root n in this step and we would add all of these uh, a vertices now to um, our dominating set and that's of course not good because then the dominating set is way too big. So to fix this what we can do is the following. We add here a, um, a sampling step so we only introduce one of these uh, a vertices in the vertices in the dominating set then with a probability of um, 1 over root n and this guarantees of course that we don't add too many elements to the dominating set. So now in step 2 we also only uh, add roughly root n elements to the dominating set. So that's good. But of course sort of the inner logic of the algorithm is broken. Now um, uh, we can't just uh, ignore um, the vertices that were missed uh, and um, uh, we, we need to sort of make sure that uh, the a vertices that we haven't introduced in the dominating set, something happens to them later on. So what we do is the following. We repeat, in fact, the entire process and give these A vertices that um, were missed a second chance to be included a little bit later again. So in fact, the way it works, we introduce multiple layers and um, the parameter i corresponds now to the layers. So i is an integer starting at 1, 2, 3, etc. So whenever the, the uncovered degree of a, a vertex becomes, say, root n, 2 root n, 3 root n, um, the vertex has a chance to be included in the dominating set. And now we ramp up these um, inclusion probabilities. So in the beginning, um, it's a moderate probability of, um, say, 2 over root n, then becomes 4 over root n, 8 over root n, so it exponentially increases. So after log n uh, sort of um, steps, then we know that the inclusion probability will actually be 1 and these vertices actually end up in the dominating set. And this is the entire algorithm. So the in introduction of these layers really allows us to improve the approximation factor. Now in terms of analysis, um, just very briefly, um, it can be seen that, uh, so if we define a level i edge to be 1, that increases the uncovered degree of an A vertex where the current uncovered degree is already between i times root n and i plus 1 times root n. So we call this a level i edge. Then we, uh, we can prove that the number of level i edges in fact goes down uh, quite quickly. So it will be n to the um, 3 half divided by 2 to the i. So dec they decrease exponentially in i. And this also means that the number of A vertices that reach such an uncovered degree uh, decreases also exponentially. So um, to reach an uncovered degree of i root n, we have only n divided by 2 to the i minus 1 many. 
So what this means, if we look at this number n divided by 2 to the i minus 1, and we look at the inclusion probability, we see that um, we add an expectation, so all of this holds an expectation, we add only two root n a vertices per level that we have. So that means overall we have these log n levels because then the inclusion probability becomes largely equal to 1 and therefore we add at most um, or we add root n log n a vertices through, while we're processing the stream. Now this is sort of the key argument of all of this. Now um, for step 3 again we add additional vertices um, but as before we've seen this uh, sort of twice now. Um, there's a similar argument that basically shows that um, this step 3 doesn't worsen the approximation factor and this gives us um, this n to the one half log n approximation. Good. Okay, good. Um, now then I'm going to move on to uh, the insertion deletion setting and I will present a lower bound for the insertion deletion setting. So in the, again, the key difference, of course, in the insertion deletion setting is that uh, we not only have edge insertions, but these uh, edges can be deleted later again. Now, our technique for proving this lower bound um, is this connection to communication complexity, to one-way communication uh, complexity. And we will have two parties, Alice and Bob. Now, the way the um, input will be constructed is as follows. We, Alice will have some edges of our input graph. We call these edges E1. Based on these edges E1, Alice needs to send a message to Bob. Now, Bob um, will hold edge deletions. So these deletions D, they necessarily are a subset of E1. Um, because, of course, these deletions, these edges must have been introduced before by um, Alice. So D is a subset of E1. In addition to that, um, Bob will also hold some more edge insertions E2. So the input graph is then described by um, some vertex set V, the edge set E1 minus the deletions union the edges E2 on Bob's side. And um, yeah, the typical connection here is that an insertion deletion streaming algorithm um, would yield such a one-way two-party protocol in this setting. And the connection is that the size of the mes message corresponds to the space of the uh, streaming algorithm. So how do we construct this uh, specific um, input? So um, let's look, first look at what Alice holds. So Alice's input is as follows. So suppose Alice has simply a random bipartite graph on um, two n vertices. So we have n vertices on the left, n vertices on the right. Now each edge here is included with probability one half. In addition to that, we turn the left um, bipartition into a clique. Now the yellow triangle here should simply indicate that the degree of all of these vertices is roughly the same. So it would be roughly n half here, um, each degree of these a vertices. Good. Um, so this is Alice's input. Alice sends a message based on this input and Bob's input then is as follows. So first of all, Bob has a, um, an index i, which is a random index in n, and it would correspond to a special a vertex here. So here's the special a vertex. Then we said Bob has some deletions. Now Bob will delete edges that were inserted by Alice, and um, the edges that would be deleted are as follows. So none of the edges incident to the special a i vertex are deleted, so these edges remain the same, so there's still this yellow triangle here. But for all of the other vertices, a1 to an, except ai, we delete all of the incident edges, but uh, leave n divided by um, alpha log n uh, edges. So um, we delete all but that many. Um, so after these deletions, each of these vertices has um, n over alpha edges left. So this is what the red triangle corresponds to. Now. Um, there will be one additional special uh, A vertex. So um, Bob has additional edges as well, and they are all incident to this vertex A prime here. And these edges, so there are many of them, um, they have the following properties. So the next slide explains this a bit better. So um, the edges incident to this one um, will, be, um, will also be very many. Um, so there's a red triangle here as well. And it will be so that the union of the neighborhoods of this vertex A prime and AI, they cover the entire side on the B side except a single element, BT. So T is a random element here, randomly chosen. 
So again, um, uh, the end, the end, so the B side is then covered by A prime A I, and there's this one element left over B T. So this is essentially the, the this this is the description of the hard input distribution. Um, so what we see here is that um, the optimal solution in this instance will always be of size three. We can always pick A prime, sorry A prime. We can pick um, A I. And then we pick an arbitrary set that covers this uh, vertex BT. Good. Now um, let's uh, think about um, a dominating set algorithm, a streaming algorithm or protocol in this uh, setting that outputs a dominating set here. And suppose that this output dominating set is an alpha approximation. So the output dominating set is D and we know that um, since the optimal solution is of size three, um, the size of D is at most three times alpha, so it's O of alpha. Now let's look at um, all the sets or vert A vertices added on the left side um, that are not A i and not A prime. So one of these, uh, these are basically uh, the subset of vertices with such a red triangle incident to it. Now we know that since B T is not covered by A i and is not covered by A, um, a prime, it must be covered by one of the vertices with such a red triangle incident on it. Now, um, how many of these uh, do we have of these uh, vertices with a red triangle? Well, we know that they are only at most, the solution is of size at most three alpha, so they're at most three alpha, even minus two of these, if we assume that these ones are included. So at most um, O of alpha um, of these vertices are included in the solution. Now, why is, what does this mean? So this means that um, Bob can look at uh, which elements um, are, are covered by these ones with the red triangles. So we know that overall um, the size of one of these um, neighborhoods is um, n divided by alpha log n. There are O of alpha many of these. So we, we can identify Bt as one of, well, um, O of alpha, um, alpha times n over alpha log n, so the size of these neighborhoods which is n over log n um, many vertices. So we know that Bt is covered by one of these vertices. There are only alpha of those included. The neighborhoods of these are small. So we know that Bt must be one of uh, um, n over log, log n um, uh, different uh, B vertices. In other words, what this means is that um, a dominating set protocol with an alpha approximation factor on this instance is able to substantially reduce the entropy of T. So recall that initially T, the way it is constructed, is a uniform random element among n possibilities, so n B vertices. After having run the algorithm, we know that T can only be an element among n over log n many uh, vertices. So the entropy of uh, T was substantially reduced by this algorithm. Now, um, the, this idea to get go from here to get an actual lower bound is then implemented as follows. So we use um, an information complexity approach. Um, so we measure the amount of information about Alice's input that is necessarily contained in the message that is sent from Alice to Bob. Now the underlying sort of obstacle problem, the hard problem, um, is uh, what we call the set union problem. So this was uh, the complement of this problem uh, uh, was studied in this Asadi Ewan Kanna paper. So here's the underlying problem that we look at. Consider a two-party problem where Alice holds a set S1, Bob holds a set S2, and they're guaranteed that the union is the entire universe N, but with one element missing. And again, this element here would be a uniform random element. The problem in set union would be to substantially reduce the entropy of T. So Bob doesn't necessarily need to identify exactly what this missing element T is, but it is enough to simply reduce to reduce the entropy of T enough. Then in this paper, 2019 paper, it is proved that the information complexity of this set union problem is omega of n. So um, yeah, so it's almost uh, equally hard as identifying exactly what T is. Now, uh, the way we work is, uh, first of all, um, if you recall, um, Bob has chosen this uh, index i uniformly at random. So uh, there's this special set AI 
this can be also one out of n possibilities. So this uh, sounds like a direct sum type of argument that we can use. So we will have here um, a complexity that is n times the complexity of the underlying problem. Now the underlying problem is the set union problem. So this sounds like the, um, the complexity should n be n times n, n square, which of course cannot be quite right. But um, the reason for that, that it's not quite n, n square, is the fact that there's this information overlap between Alice and Bob. Um, Bob holds these edge deletions in our setting, and uh, in fact, there are only n over alpha log n edges per a vertex that are unknown to Bob, because Bob has, has these deletions. So in fact, the complexity that we get is this direct sum argument, um, which is uh, multiplies everything by n, times um, the number of edges that are unknown to Bob per vertex. Uh, so um, we get this n squared divided by alpha log n lower bound here. Okay, good. Okay, good. Then um, I would like to uh, conclude. So what are our contributions again? So our contributions are essentially optimal bounds for dominating set up to polylog factors in both the insertion only and the insertion deletion settings. Um, in, the ins in the insertion only uh, setting, we saw that there is a phase transition as well at the factor at the approximation factor root n. In the insertion deletion setting, we proved this uh, lower bound that n square over alpha is best possible. Now, this algorithm that we have, the root n approximation, also extends to set cover instances in the edge arrival setting with uh, space m plus n, and uh, gives the same root n approximation factor. And in a follow-up work, we also show that a lower bound that even in number in terms of the number of sets in a general edge arrival setting, omega of m space is necessary for such a root n approximation in the uh, edge arrival setting. And um, I would like to uh, conclude with one open question, and that is as follows. So essentially all set cover and dominating set space lower bounds for streaming, they rely on, um, on an output certificate. So um, we need a cover certificate for that and exploit uh, the cover certificate to prove our lower bounds. And the key question would be, um, can we uh, avoid this step? Can we prove lower bounds for algorithms that, don't require to out, uh, that we don't require to output a cover certificate? Good. Um, then, yeah, thanks very much for listening.